Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'll be going through my entire luxury handbag collection. And I think the only time I did this video was back in 2020 when I started my YouTube channel. So I have added quite a few more bags to my collection since then, which is why I want to do this updated handbag collection video. And also to wrap up 2023, I want to share with you guys what handbags are still in my collection and what I've added. I do still have quite a few of the handbags that I had in that previous video because I tend to do a lot of research before I purchase a handbag. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm purchasing a handbag that costs thousands of dollars, I want to make sure that I'm in love with it, for one. Secondly, that I know that it's going to work with my lifestyle. And three, that it's going to serve a purpose in my collection that another handbag doesn't already serve. So if you guys are new to my channel, please consider subscribing if you want to learn more about luxury handbags. If you want to do a little bit more research, you're a bit of a luxury handbag nerd, kind of like myself. I love doing handbag research, doing reviews, unboxings, and just sharing my knowledge with you guys so that you know before you purchase these items just because handbags are very expensive especially nowadays with all these price increases so before spending your money your hard-earned money on these handbags make sure that you do your research and i really hope you consider subscribing and joining my youtube family so i'm gonna start off with louis vuitton because louis vuitton was the very first luxury brand fashion house that i started my luxury handbag journey with so the very first handbag that i purchased from louis vuitton that started my whole luxury handbag addiction was the Louis Vuitton Speedy 30. And yes, I still have this in my collection, even though I never use it. I swear I haven't used this for the past five years. I got this about a decade ago and I just have not used it for the past few years. And that is because it is the Speedy version, not the bandolier version. So it doesn't have the straps that you can put on your shoulder or wear as a crossbody. It's top handle only and it's such a big bag. I am contemplating selling this. I have thought about it for quite a while, but let me know in the comment section below what you think. It is a classic piece, but I just never use it. So the Speedy 30 in the Demi Abin print is still in my collection. So the next Louis Vuitton handbag that I purchased shortly after the Speedy 30, no joke, I think I purchased it like two weeks after I purchased the Speedy 30 because I kept thinking about it, was the Louis Vuitton Neverfull in the MM size. And this bag is such a workhorse bag. It's so, so good. If you are thinking about purchasing the Neverfull, I'd highly recommend it. I think it's around $3,000 now, but I still think it's worth it because I've had this for years, again, almost a decade, and it's still held up really, really well. There's a little bit of wrinkling on the sides here, but given this bag is 10 years old, you cannot even tell, and you can put so much stuff inside here. So it even comes with like a little pouch a wristlet that you can take out separately or you can connect to the bag. I think I've done a whole video on the Neverfull, maybe like a comparison between the Neverfull and the Speedy, so I'll link that video down below. But this bag is so good, it fits so much inside. I will never get rid of, even though I haven't reached for it as often, I do use it here and there when I need a big tote bag, but I haven't used it nearly as much as I used to when I first purchased it. But this bag is never going anywhere. This bag is so useful. So I think if you've been eyeing this bag for a really long time, I'd highly recommend purchasing it sooner rather than later because Louis Vuitton are just going to keep increasing the price on these classic pieces. And this is a classic, definitely a classic to Louis Vuitton. There were talks a few months ago about Louis Vuitton discontinuing the Louis Vuitton Neverfull. But I don't know if that was just like a rumor or if it's actually going to happen and going to revamp the Neverfull. But I say purchase it sooner rather than later. Don't risk missing out on this Neverfull bag. I doubt they would ever discontinue it though because it is such a classic. If they ever were to discontinue it, I think they would come out with like a newer version but still very similar silhouette and style. So yeah, the Louis Vuitton Neverfull was the next handbag that I purchased and will stay in my collection forever and ever. So I think the next bag that I purchased or have from Louis Vuitton is the Louis Vuitton Palm Springs Mini Backpack. And this is such an adorable little bag. This was all the rage. Like everyone went crazy over this bag during lockdown. I remember it was so hard for me to find this bag. I think I got lucky online and I found it available online and I quickly purchased it. I think I had some quality issues with that one though and I managed to return it and then or exchange it with one in store so I was really lucky about that and this one is absolutely perfect so I don't think I'd ever sell this 
bag even though i haven't used it as much now but i think it's such an adorable bag it fits so much inside as well and it's the newer version with the smooth zipper so there's no like canvas lip covering the zipper so you can easily just open and close it really smoothly and just open it like that i've got a little Samorka organizer in there i've done so many videos on the palm strings mini so i'll link them all in the description box below Anything that I mentioned in today's video, any handbags that I've done reviews on or unboxings, I will leave in the description box below if you wanted a closer look at it. The next Louis Vuitton handbag that I have is the Louis Vuitton Nano Speedy, and this is the original version, so the one that doesn't have the detachable or adjustable strap, but I think that this version is so much better than the newer updated version that Louis Vuitton came out with. I did a whole video on why I think that's the case, but I just honestly think that this version is so, so much better. Even though you can't detach the strap, it actually works perfectly for me as a crossbody bag it's just perfectly i'm about five foot three five foot four and i think it just sits perfectly just above my hip so around my waist area and i just love when crossbody bags sit there on me and i think this is another bag that i don't think i'll ever get rid of so these are the two speedies in my collection the speedy 30 which looks huge on camera i swear it's not this big it looks like a 35 size but this is the speedy 30 and this is the speedy nano the original version and then the next bag that i purchased i think i'm going to classify it as a bag even though some people classify it more just like a pouch or a small leather good louis vuitton classified as a handbag so that's why it's in this handbag collection video so this is my louis vuitton pochette accessoire and i've just got a pochette strap attached to it because I mainly use this as a crossbody bag and I think it works perfectly as a crossbody bag. Sometimes if I'm going out for like a night out, like a little bit of a dressy occasion, I will use the strap that it came with, which is just like a little shoulder bag. Or I do use like a chain crossbody strap, which works really well too. But this strap is just from Organize My Bag, who I highly recommend. I love all of their products. Their Vachetta leather matches perfectly with their Louis Vuitton Vachetta leather and the gold it's just perfect like you wouldn't even tell this is different definitely check out organize my bag i do have a 10 percent coupon code so definitely check it out in the description box below as well but yeah i just love using all of their chains and straps to accessorize my handbags and then turning this into the crossbody bag that it is now i've got so much wear out of this bag it's just ridiculous how much i've worn this like i swear it should have more wear than it does but it's held, holding up really well. The little tab is getting really dark now though. Pochette Accessoire has gone up so, so much in price. I honestly probably wouldn't recommend it anymore, even though it is really versatile because you can switch it up. You can purchase different straps and chains. I would honestly look into other fashion houses. I just don't think the Pochette Accessoire for over $2,000 is worth it anymore. Unless you really love it and you've been wanting it for a really long time, then maybe just because I think you will get your cost per wear down on the bag, but I honestly think it's very simple. Like I don't think I would be paying over $2,000 for it now. And then I think the final handbag from Louis Vuitton that I have in my collection right now is the Alma BB in the Dami Abin print. And I love this so, so much. This bag is my little baby. This has been on my wish list for such a long time. And I finally pulled the trigger. I think I got it last year for my birthday. And I think it's so beautiful. I just love the lock detailing of it. I love like the little jingle it has as you're walking. And I love the sturdy zipper. It's smooth, but it's like tough at the same time. It's so satisfying. Like if any of you guys own the Elmer BB, you know what I'm talking about. Or if you don't know what I'm talking about, go into the store, try it out. You will fall in love with the Elmer BB. It's such a beautiful classic bag. It's got the beautiful red lining as well with the strap to wear it crossbody or as a shoulder bag. I just love this beautiful Elmer shape. The silhouette of it is so classic, so timeless. So I'm really glad I have this in my collection. If you guys have been eyeing this bag, I'd highly recommend going out and purchasing it. It's still under 3,000 Australian dollars, so definitely worth it. And I can definitely see it going over $3,000 in a couple of years time. So definitely purchase it sooner rather than later. So the next couple of handbags I have in my collection are from Prada. So Prada has been a brand that I've been in love with since I started my luxury handbag collection my journey you can call it but i don't have too much from them just because they are quite expensive and they don't really hold their resale value so as i mentioned earlier i do a lot of research before i purchase a handbag 
and this one handbag that I have in my collection was all the rage back then. It was so trendy, but also a very classic piece. And it was my dream bag when I started working professionally. I think back then it was called the double zip tote bag because it has the two zips, but I think they also have another one with two zips and it's more like a tote. This is more like a more structured briefcase style, but I'm just gonna call it the double zip tote bag. And this is in the black Saffiano leather. And this bag is so beautiful. Like when you just look at it, it's like boss lady vibes. It's very structured, very brief, like briefcase like. It's really roomy, you can fit a laptop in here, iPad, documents. It's beautiful as a work bag, but I honestly just never used this. And I've thought about selling this so, so much, but this was like my goal bag when I started working full time. I got my full time big girl job. I told myself I'm going to save and purchase this bag and I finally saved enough money to purchase it and then I was too scared to wear it to work because I didn't want to feel judged and I know some of you guys feel the same way you don't like wearing your luxury bags to work and I'm exactly the same I know it's probably just all in my head people are like looking at my bag judging my bag thinking oh my gosh she spent so much on a handbag and I think this is all in my head like no one's actually said that to me at work but I just feel like eyes on me all the time when I'm carrying this around at work so I carried it for a few weeks and then I just kind of stopped and then wore my long champ bag or like a Michael Kors or like a non-branded bag to work so yeah this has just been sitting in my closet for a few years I honestly have not reached for this I want to say for like at least yeah again five years just like my speedy 30 I just don't reach for it because it is a top handle bag it does come with a shoulder strap to wear on the shoulder or even crossbody if you wanted to even though this is really big to be wearing as a crossbody I just have not used this at all and it's still in like perfect condition I don't know if I want to hold on to it anymore because it's taking up space I've got a lot more handbags in my collection now and yeah it's just a lot of money to be sitting there even though I won't be getting nearly as much as I paid for it at least it's something so I'm thinking about selling this bag too even though it's so beautiful I think it'll be better off in a better home where someone can appreciate it and wear it to work and wear it more often so the next Prada handbag that I have in my collection is very different to that double zip tote bag so this is a very casual carefree style bag and it's the Prada Re-Edition 2005 in the nylon with the crossbody strap. I have done a full review of this bag and this was so big back in the day. I don't see I don't see it nearly as often now. I do see it here and there but not nearly as much as I used to and I'm pretty sure this is no longer a trendy bag but I still love it. It's still a classic bag. It's still like very chic, very just plain and simple so you don't have to worry about any big logos in your face. I wear this like non-stop because I often wear just like leggings or very casual wear like a hoodie or a sweatshirt. This goes perfectly with that and on those days where I just don't care, I just want to go out get some groceries or run some errands, I just carry this bag and it's so effortless, it's so chic. And in here, a lot of people ask what the heck do you put in here? You can put AirPods in here but what I like to put are uh, my hand sanitizers. So this one is from Bath and Body Works and these fit perfectly inside like I swear Prada made this for the Bath and Body Works hand sanitizer so it just slips in perfectly there you can zip it closed so that is the perfect spot for it because sometimes I don't want to be rummaging through my the main compartment with all my other things I can just grab the hand sanitizer from here easily because it's across my chest and it's so easy to use so yeah, sorry that this is turning into like a mini review of all my handbags. I don't mean it to be, but I just wanted to give a little bit of attention to each of my handbags in my collection. So yeah, the Prada Re-Edition 2005 in the nylon is still in my collection. I think this bag will be forever in my collection as well because it's so carefree. It's so easy to clean and I can wear it on any different weather season, any occasion. It's perfect and it's so versatile as well. This is like the transformer of all bags because you can transform and wear it in so many different ways. So the next fashion house in my luxury handbag collection is YSL and I don't think I owned any YSL bags back in my 2020 handbag collection video. I've only recently started getting into YSL and the very first YSL handbag that I got is the YSL Uptown pouch or clutch and this is in the pebbled 
grained calfskin leather so it's really durable and i purchased this just because i wanted to test out ysl leather before i jumped into a full handbag because ysl even though they are more affordable in terms of luxury handbags they are still quite expensive and their leathers are really they're just as nice just as durable and that's why I invested in another handbag from YSL, which I'll get into a bit later. But yeah, the first bag that I got from YSL is the Uptown Pouch. Again, this is more just like a clutch. There's no strap or shoulder strap to attach to it or chain. It's just a plain, simple pouch. It looks like almost 2D when you flip it, like really flat. But once you stuff things in, you can actually fit. It expands quite a lot. There's actually a lot of room to give and it's got a really strong magnetic closure that snaps shut like that so it is really secure i just love the simplicity of this i think this is in like the beige or dark beige i'm not too sure but i'll leave it in the description box below but i just think this neutral color just goes with everything so the next ysl handbag that i added to my collection is the ysl kate wallet on chain it does have the beautiful strap that all or majority of ysl handbags come with it's got the beautiful gold chain. The version that I have is in the mock croc leather with the tassel and I just love this tassel. It's so fun to play with. It just adds a little bit something extra to the bag and I think it's stunning in the mock croc leather. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Why I do the best mock croc leather in any fashion house like hands down they do the best mock croc leather and it's so durable. It's so it even still smells like leather even though this is like over a year old it still smells so beautiful and it's just like a very small little clutch like that it's got card slots perfect for like just your essentials on a night out if you're just having dinner like date night this is just beautiful for that and it's got a beautiful strong magnetic closure so you don't have to worry about this opening all the time and yeah i just love playing with this tassel so the next luxury fashion house that i have in my collection is chanel and i love chanel chanel is the epitome of luxury to me even though lately they haven't been getting really good reputation i still think of them as a luxurious brand and i just don't own as much as i'd like to from chanel just because of all the price increases i wish i owned more from chanel back in the day i wish i invested more money into the old chanel back then but the prices now they've completely outpriced capped me off the whole handbag list i think they've just that's like their strategy now they're just targeting the really really rich and wealthy clients and just completely cutting out the average joes in a way so i'm glad i have a couple in my collection so my very first and dream bag that i ever purchased from chanel is the chanel medium large classic flap in the black with gold hardware and this bag is just my dream bag i know a lot of people have like the Hermes birkin or the Hermes kelly on their dream wish list but this was my dream wish list bag and i I'm so glad that I have it. I purchased this back in, I think it was like 2016, I want to say, and it was around $6,000, maybe $6,500. And now this retails for $16,000. So yeah, it's gone up $10,000 in less than 10 years. So I <laughs> cannot say that I'm not glad that I purchased it for $6,000 back then. I don't think I would ever, ever sell this bag, even though I never use it. I'm too scared to use it now. I've used it maybe a couple of a handful of times in the past year for special occasions but that's about it it just sits in my closet and i'm just too scared to wear it it's still in like beautiful perfect condition it's got the caviar leather which is still nice and durable it's got the beautiful turn lock there and the double flap and the beautiful burgundy lining it's just so classic like this is so elegant oh my god i'm like falling in love with this again i hardly reach for this bag but every time i look at it i'm just like i can't believe it and it's a little bit dramatic to say but this is a forever piece like i can imagine handing this down when i'm really really old and frail like where i can't even like move anymore because when i'm a grandma you can be sure i'm still going to be rocking this bag and then 
that's when I can eventually pass it down to generations to come. But for now, this is staying in my collection and I'm not going to be selling this bag. So the Chanel medium large classic flap in the black caviar leather with gold hardware. This is my dream bag. So the next Chanel handbag that I have in my collection, I purchased from the pre-loved market. And I'm so glad that I did because this color and this combo, they just don't sell anymore in Chanel. And I think with Chanel anyway, if they come out with colors, they rarely ever come out with the same color in a new season. It'll be slightly different or they've changed up the leather. But this is the Chanel Square Mini in the caviar leather in this beautiful Sakura pink color. So this is in the silver hardware as well. But the one thing I love about this is it's got the beautiful caviar leather and Chanel just don't do the mini square or the mini rectangular in caviar leather anymore. It's all in the lambskin now. So you cannot even get this from the boutique. This is also a forever bag for me, even though I don't really wear this as much. I think now that it's warming up, it's summertime in Australia, I will reach for this more often, especially with like a cute little summer dress. I think this goes perfectly. Yeah, I'm really happy I purchased this when I did and I don't think I'm ever gonna let this one go. So the last Chanel handbag I have in my collection is the Chanel Wallet on Chain. So it does come with a beautiful chain here and it's got the beautiful baby pink interior. And this bag I purchased from a consignment seller as well, but this was in brand new condition. This is in the lambskin, but it's got the beautiful iridescent color to it. So this is my unicorn bag, but I just want to say I honestly have not reached for it because I'm too scared. And I actually purchased this for not for my wedding day, but I intended to wear it on my wedding day. But whoever said you need a wedding bag obviously has not been married or had a wedding before because I did not use this at all. Like once I did not use this. I used it for like a photo for the photographers to take a photo of me holding the bag. But that was it. I actually never used this. You're just crazy on the wedding day. You're running around doing stuff. You don't have time to be checking your phone like your bridesmaids will be holding your phone or the your husband or the groom will be holding your phone for you in their pocket. So yeah, I just did not, I was just, I was not carrying a handbag around with me on my wedding day. Yeah, I don't know if I will ever get the use out of it. I've honestly thought about selling this. I know it kills me to say that because this is my unicorn bag, but I'm not sure yet. So yeah, for now it's still in my collection, looking pretty on my shelf. So I think I've just got two bags left in my entire handbag collection and they are from different brands. So I'll go through them one by one. So the next bag I have in my collection is the Chloe Nile bag. And yes, I still have this bag. I have thought about selling it, but sometimes I do like to reach for it on like the very carefree occasions. I think it's also called like the bracelet bag because it kind of looks like a piece of jewelry, like a bracelet there when you have it around the crook of your arm but I just like hand holding it like this too. It does have, it does come with a shoulder strap in there, which I just keep inside the bag, but it's got the beautiful suede lining inside. So yeah, the Chloe Nile bag is still in my collection. I'm not sure if I will sell it, but I just don't think it's popular now anyway. So even if I were to sell it, I don't think I'd get much for it, but it's just so beautiful, especially when it, the bracelet handle sits in front like that and it's just sitting on my shelf it's so beautiful so yeah this is the second last bag in my collection and the final luxury handbag that i have in my collection is from Givenchy and this is the Antigona mini in the beautiful black calfskin leather the shiny calfskin leather it's so nice and beautiful and soft now it's still a really structured bag but the leather is so soft because i've had this for years and years i think i got this back in 2017 and it's held up really well. I just love how chunky the zipper is and how smooth it is. It gets me every time. So I've just got that interior with the strap so you can wear it on the shoulder or as a crossbody. I love wearing this as a crossbody or for dressier occasions or like a dinner out. I will just use it by the top handle like that and carry it like that. It is a very small bag, but it is very deceiving because you can fit so much inside. I have my pink Samorga organizer in there so I can organize and see everything clearly. But yeah, the Givenchy Antigona Mini, I do use this here and there, especially for work as well. I like to carry this if I'm not carrying my laptop because it's small and compact. It just fits everything I need. And yeah, I don't think I would ever get rid of this bag either. Even though it's not as popular, it was trendy back then. I just think it's such a classic bag. It's very minimalistic. It's just got the Givenchy logo there. And 
yeah, it's very discreet. You can't tell it's a luxury bag until you look closely, but the craftsmanship, the structure, everything about it is just held up beautifully. I like to take care of my bags, as you can see. But yeah, so this is the very last handbag in my luxury handbag collection. I think I have a few more bags than I did in my previous video, but not crazy amounts. There are a couple of handbags in my collection that I'm thinking of selling, but I just don't know yet. So yeah we'll see maybe in the next year or two uh, my handbag collection will completely change but yeah that is my entire luxury handbag collection for 2023 if you guys want a closer look at some of these bags please check out the description box below but yeah that is all for today's video i really hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel it really helps support my channel and help my channel grow but until next time take care and i'll see you in my next video bye